What are your thoughts on holding off getting married until you have enough money for a wedding versus having a court wedding? Wedding in... Um, these print quotation marks. Parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone. Hi. Welcome back. Welcome We're the great right family. It's been a while, but we are back, y'all. <laughs> we are back. And we just wanted to do just a quick video updating you all on how we are. And then mm -hmm. we also put it out there that if you had any burning questions you wanted us to answer, we'll do that in this video. Try to keep it short, try to keep it quick, but try. <laughs> Try for us. Some of these questions were pretty deep, so we'll see. They were good questions. Um, whatever we're not able to get to in this video, we'll probably follow up with another one. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in, and let's get started. Awesome. So one of the first questions we got was, how are we? So what's our update? How are we doing? I think we're managing. We're trying to. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little weird to be, I mean, just not in my normal routine that I have like on a weekly basis not be able to see the people that I normally see on a weekly basis so that's weird um, but you know it, it's been a blessing though for me just to be home with you all home with you and Steven and having that time and just being able to um, get some extra sleep and uh, get some extra things done I've been doing a lot of reading which has been really great so I feel like that's been keeping me kind of like heading in the right direction um, but yeah it's just it's, it's, it's different Good. Yeah, I mean, I think it's safe to say that I'm doing good. Um, as a stay-at-home mom, not a lot has changed for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Except, you know, Stephen and I aren't going out running errands together or going to different activities with other kids and stuff. But um, for the most part, you know, it's been the same for me. Um, but I think overall we're doing good as a family. We're focusing on keeping our health. Um, our immune system strong, making wise decisions about where we go and um, if we go mm -hmm. outside and that sort of thing. So, um, if we go outside, we don't have a choice. Steven. Well, I don't make it want to make it seem like we're going out and like parlaying and oh and no, he just, yo, he, he really <laughs> no. But Stephen loves being house. outdoors, so yeah, we try to take him for a walk every day. But yeah, yeah. Um, but we're I think we're doing good. Mm -hmm. um, and a follow up question to that was finding hope during this time um i think you know as a christian like my hope is built on nothing less than jesus christ and righteousness and i truly find peace in knowing that no matter what happens no matter what next you know revelation comes in the news today or tomorrow god is still in control god is still on his throne and you know, I just trust him with my life. I trust him with everything that happens. And that's really where I find my hope and my peace is knowing that he's in control. And um, that, yeah, that, that that's kind of where I leave it. I, I try not to worry or get fearful or panic, but just trust that, like, God, you will provide for our needs. Mm -hmm. you, you saw this. You know this is not a surprise to you. And we just really need to put our trust and our faith in you in this time. Amen, amen. That sure foundation um, reminds me of the song, of the hymn, Will Your Ankle Hold, you know? And so, um, yeah, I mean, just really making sure that your foundation is sure right now. That's at least how we've been able to find hope during this crisis. Um, I think for me, practically, one of the things has been journaling a little bit more. Like we have these Bible verses that we try to memorize um, on a weekly basis. So I've been writing those down in my journal and just using it as like a time for reflection um, in the morning or just you know, at some point in the day when I just need encouragement going to that journal and just being able to um, recount that has been uh, really um, just really important to me and, and helpful to kind of keep my mind um, focused on God's promises and just on the reassurance of his word. We had a couple questions about marriage and family planning and that sort of thing. So the first, mm. one of the first questions was, how has having a baby changed the dynamic of your marriage? And I think we touched on this a little bit yeah. in our, like a couple of videos ago we did, how parenthood has changed our lives or something like that. We'll tag it. But, um, 
Uh, you want to answer first? <laughs> How has parenthood changed our marriage? I'm I think it's just, I don't know if this is going to be repetitive of what I kind of said already in the other video, but I just feel like now with a baby, we just have to be much more like intentional about each other and like about spending time with one another and like, this is your wife, you know, ask her how she's doing, help her, you know, like, but be intentional about it. Like, cause so for so much of the day, my attention at times can be caught up in, of course work, but then also like Steven's needs, Steven, you know, caring for him, tending to him, he's crying or he's whining or he's asking for something. And, you know, you want to be responsive to that, right? Um, but then you also cannot forget, I think, just caring and tending to your, your marriage. And um, that's been the biggest thing for me is just being more intentional about, mm -hmm. hey, girl, how you doing? <laughs> you know, and like, you know, talking to Sharetta and just spending quality time together um, and still making sure that our marriage is as healthy. I look at it as what can you control and what you can't control so having a baby will obviously shift your uh, the dynamic of your marriage because now you're not just splitting spending time between you know your spouse and just yourself or other activities friends family now you actually have a whole nother human being that you're caring for Word. and nurturing 24 7 mm -hmm. um, and that requires a lot of pouring out it requires a lot of you know what is he gonna eat? Does he have clothes? Is his clothes fit? Like it's just, it, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of mental and physical energy to pour into an, a child. And so because of, because your time is now going to be spent investing in that, you know, you have less time now. Like the pie kind of starts to split a little bit more. Or that's good to um, mm -hmm. But like Brandon said, it's all about being intentional. Um, you know, by God's grace, we had like three years of marriage before Stephen was here um, and Almost. Mm. yeah just about two months <laughs> but we had we had three years of marriage before Stephen was here and I think that helped us really build a foundation so when we feel like we're not really spending time with each other or really just talking to each other we can go back to that foundation we had that friendship that you know intimate connection to say like hey let's prioritize this now and then I guess practical things that we do I mean Stephen we're, we're blessed he loves his sleep <laughs> he lo like he he does not fight us to go for a nap or to um, go to bed he lo he, right now he, we don't know that could change I right pray now. it stays that way <laughs> but he, he's always like from birth like he's always loved his sleep and so what we do is when we put him to bed at night, we try to like then have that one-on-one -on -one time with each other just to talk. And then, you know, like the weekends right now, when my mom is here, um, we are able to like just have some one-on-one -on -one time uh, when someone else can watch him. So, yeah, mm -hmm. um, that, that that's what we do. And then follow-up to that um, is, do y'all plan to have any more kids soon? Soon is so subjective. <laughs> we don't know. I think sometimes what tomorrow holds. I think sometimes there's this expectation that once you've had one within like two years or even less, yeah, you're gonna start about thinking one. about the next one. Right. Um, so I can understand where this question is coming from because Stephen is almost two. But I think for us, um, we we want to be wise about. Um, what what we can handle really <laughs> mm -hmm. and and not just like we not just have a baby for the sake of having a baby i mean prayerfully we absolutely would love for steven to have a sibling i think sibling relationships are so important so yes we would want more children what that time looks like we're really following the lord i literally pray like before we have another child lord how am i doing how am i managing steven like am i am i truly doing and giving it my all right. and do you then see in me the capacity to now pour into another child because I I don't want any future children to be neglected because we're in a position where we're not ready to really nurture care for them provide for them so that's my prayer every day it's like Lord help me to do what I need to do with Stephen and then if, if you so will then bless us with the next one like I think that was probably a long-winded way of saying <laughs> in God's timing so amen I mean it's pretty
pretty great answer. I don't have anything <laughs> really to add on that, so <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh-huh. Yes. Great. So we do desire more children, but in God's time. Yeah. All right. Then our next question is actually on the same topic. So mm. would you recommend young ladies to get married and have children seeing the times we are living in? Mm. That's a deep question, y'all. I think you just have to be very observant of what's going on right now. The times right now to have a child, I feel, are very uncertain. Um, just with what's you know happening in the world and, and just kind of the restrictions around you know um, access to hospital facilities and just I mean I heard of somebody having a baby and like the father couldn't even be present for the birth because of the restrictions around accessing hospitals. So. It's just a, um, I don't really have a good answer on this. Uh, it's <laughs> Would you recommend? I, I think they are asking I, I don't for know. our personal opinion. So as far as marriage goes, I mean, it, to me, if someone is right now in a serious courtship, they've been praying about marriage, you know, God has revealed to them that it's their will for them to get married, then I don't see why not. Obviously, given the, you know, quarantine restrictions we are all in right now, if you live in the U.S., um, you're not going to be able to have a wedding um, in the traditional way. Um, a lot of people have been doing weddings virtually over Zoom. So I think that if, if someone's already kind of on that path and, and God has brought them together, I, w I would say why not. Um, but I've also been talking to some of my single friends, um, just a lot of conversations about relationships lately. And they feel like, hey, at this point with how the world is, if I get married, cool. But if not, like, it's okay. Um, so I think it's one of those things like at the end of the day our heart's desire should never be to reach this ultimate place of like my ultimate satisfaction or place is marriage and a child our ultimate goal should be heaven it should be you know being ready to meet Jesus so I feel like no matter what happens mm -hmm. right now if that's our ultimate goal we'll be okay if we're not getting married or we're not having children um, like Brennan said I think it is important to consider right now like like personally right now I'm not trying to get pregnant because there's so much uncertainty around you know delivery and going to the hospital having appointments when you're pregnant your immune system is more suppressed um, and you're more vulnerable and susceptible to viruses and to other things around you so you know I wouldn't say now is the time to get pregnant if you are already pregnant well praise the Lord he let that happen and I, I believe he will see all of the women right now who are pregnant all the way through um, but would I actively go out and try to get pregnant right now? Probably not. Go so. out. <laughs> go not out go place. out, but <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I wouldn't be trying to actively get pregnant right now because of the times. And then you also have to consider, too, not just pregnancy and childbirth, but I like the world might shift after this. Shift. Yeah, like I, might, I have a shift. hard time believing that things are gonna go back to what they used to be after all of this. Um, so you have to yeah. think about raising a child, or what are the implications gonna be for you and your family if you are having children now? So right. Certain. Like, yeah, it's uncertain. Um, so, you know, but when it comes to marriage, though, I mean, the Bible does say two is better than one. <laughs> so you might be able to like <laughs> ride ride it out together. It's, it's true. <laughs> if you're um, true. if you're already on that path. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Would I recommend it? I think it's just, uh, let's exercise wisdom right now. Let's ask ourselves yeah. the questions that are important. Like, if I were to have children now, or if I were to have children within the next year, what, you know, are there a lot of questions that I can answer? And right. So, yeah. yeah. Next question is, as a single person, how do you really know that you are ready for a relationship? Can you ever reach a point where you're like, I've done A, B, C, and this is it. I'm ready. No. <laughs> um, that's a very short answer, but our our belief, and help me if I'm characterizing this wrong, but our belief is that um, there's no like specific criteria that we can ascribe to say that you have to meet you know these points in order to be married. We think that each person really needs to consider their um, their spiritual foundation heading into marriage. Their you know potential marriage, their understanding of the roles of a husband and wife, um, getting adequate counsel from um, those around you, um, also your um, financial foundations, your emotional foundation as well. Um, do you know who 
you are are you comfortable are you are you confident in your identity as a man or as a woman um, as a child of God um, yeah there's there's several questions that I think we would like encourage people to really ask of themselves and really do like a, a thorough self assessment before moving forward into a commitment but I can't say that it's like a you know checkbox here checkbox there before moving forward into a, a really serious relationship that could result in marriage yeah um, I don't yeah. think there's like a comprehensive list to say like I've done all these things and I'm ready I do think ready happens every day like so each day we should be seeking to be better than we were the day before mm -hmm. um, but I think there are self-awareness is important so it's important to know like where I am emotionally mentally spiritually financially all of the ease um, am I in a place where I can contribute to a he healthy marriage and a healthy home and I think the more self-awareness there is of that then that can tell you what areas you still need to work on what areas you will need to work through because at the end of the day we can try to prepare as much as possible but you will never stop learning and being groomed in right. marriage right. so um, yeah I think it's just awareness of, of, of of the preparation stage awareness of where you are and what you would be bringing to the table if you were to get married and daily you know asking the Lord to help you grow and become better in those areas Amen. Yeah. all right our next question is how can you as a lady be of encouragement to a partner who has lost his job oh, Good question. <laughs> <laughs> how can you be of encouragement um well, first of all, praying for him. Um, I think that's where to begin is to cover him in prayer, bring, lift him up before the Lord and to seed for him in that way. Um, I think for a lot of men, and you can speak on this behalf, but the financial provision for a family is very important. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> the financial provision for your family is very important and I think almost tied to identity in a way. So you feel like if you don't have that job or you're not providing for your family that way, that affects who you are as a man. Um, so on being sensitive to that and understanding that, being careful with your words on, I guess, how you speak to him about it. Like, this is not the time to be like, why don't you go out there and find a job? Why don't you do this? But encouraging to me would be like, hey, look at something I found. You can check it out. Or, hey, you know here's what we can do in the meanwhile if it's a layoff I don't know what the circumstances are but mm -hmm. hey like why don't we um, you know watch this video course together or like trying to just continue to have productivity in your day um, maybe encouraging him to learn a new skill like I think trade skills are amazing and so you know if there's free time encouraging him to learn a yeah. trade skill and I think just just being there um, and not in a condemning way, but just making yourself available to say, hey, I'm here to talk, I'm here to support, I'm here to encourage you in whatever it is you need or you feel you need to get through this time. Um, is and it a boyfriend or is it a husband? Husband. husband? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, husband. Oh, it says partner, I'm sorry. Partner? Yeah. Well, good be boyfriend. Um, I don't know what that means. But I think that the big thing here is, is prayer. And I think just a reminder of, um, I think God's calling on this person's life that, um, number one, prayer, like, you know, when you were praying for me, when I was going through all the changes and all the stuff in my kind of past, um, I think that was really what, um, was so encouraging to see after the fact, like to know after the fact that you've been spending so much time in prayer um, for me. And I think secondly, also is just finding a way to remind this person that the Lord has a very specific plan for you. Um, and I think encouraging this person to think through their talents, um, think through you know their passions, um, think through what opportunities they currently have in, uh, available to them to get exposure to what this next chapter could look like for them. Um, perhaps where they were before was just a temporary assignment and like my belief is that you know um, a lot of these places where we're employed or where we're you know active in volunteer work or we're active in church or whatever like some of this stuff is just for a season and it's all it's all that it's meant for it's just for a season 
for us to reach somebody there, for us to, you know, accomplish a work for the Lord there, and then we're off to the next, you know, opportunity that the Lord has for us. So I think just encouragement around that, um, talents, uh, um, gifts, um, passions, opportunities, and, uh, and of course, prayer. Next question is, what are your thoughts on holding off getting married until you have enough money for a wedding versus having a court wedding? Wedding and movies, oh. print, quotation marks. Parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> thoughts um, on holding off for, on a, thoughts on holding off for a court wedding? Or? Thoughts on holding off getting married until you have enough money for a wedding instead of rushing to have a court wedding because that's all you can probably do right now. So it's oh. like, what is your thought on like not getting married until you have the money to have the wedding you want versus getting married now in the court but not having any wedding? I mean, I feel like it's, it's a nice thing to have people come together and to celebrate, you know, your marriage and to have food and to have, you know, cameras and all that. It, it's nice, but it's not like, an, in my mind, it's not a necessity. Like, you don't need, this isn't like, you don't, you won't find that anywhere in the Bible to say that there needs to be this like, you know, hold um, up now. What? It was the wedding in Cana. I'm saying you won't find like, you won't find a dis like, description of these you know qualifiers to be able to have a <laughs> wedding. Like you don't you don't find that anywhere. So you know like my my thoughts on that are are have what you can afford. If all that you can afford is you know a court wedding and uh, dinner at Olive Garden, I don't know where. I don't, you ain't you aren't going to Olive Garden right now, but like wherever you know, having a Zoom dinner or whatever you want to have, like I think that's fine. Like have what you can have, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't prescribe people to, you know, definitely have to wait till you can have the, you know, what are the bridal mm -hmm. bridal wedding magazine things, whatever those weddings that you see on those bridal magazines and stuff. I wouldn't say that you have to wait till you can have that. Yeah, um, I would agree. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend putting yourself in debt to have a wedding, but I, I agree with you. I think just just do what you can. The most important thing is the marriage. It's not the right. wedding. And I understand that some people have a vision and they have desires of what they wanted for that big day, but I, I've seen so many different ways of people getting married. Like, I saw this couple, they, they got engaged, and I think like a couple months later, they got married. Their wedding was in someone's home, like in their house. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I guess like a relative was like a designer or a decor person. They draped that place with curtains. They brought in like some little, or covered the fake chairs with some, like they did it in a house. Right. And I'm, venue costs are one of the biggest costs for weddings. And I'm sure they saved a whole lot of money. So I'm like, work with what you got. But focus on the marriage. Like the question I would be asking is, mm -hmm. should we hold off on a marriage because we need more time in counseling and prayer, rather than we don't have enough right. money to have a wedding? Word. Like that. That's how I would look at it. And honestly, we're almost we're like four and a half years married now. Looking back, it, it's so Dang. faint. Like it, more we than four and a half we had a married. we had yeah. a good wedding day, but it, it, there's just so much more to marriage that in the grand scheme of things, the wedding that we had doesn't even matter right now. It doesn't it doesn't matter what our wedding day was like because yeah. there's so much more to marriage. So that's my thought. I think do what you can with what you have with, with the resources that you have. Don't go in debt if you can save save. If you can't and all you can afford is the marriage certificate and you get a pastor then so be it just make the most of what you can i've seen really beautiful weddings come out of that so yeah. don't put pressure on yourself to have you know that instagram wedding and you could still instagram it if you i mean be happy with what you, know you got what I mean. <laughs> you know like, the weddings that are like go day, viral on instagram yeah. and y'all i hope that would go viral. yeah to this day <laughs> y'all correct me if i'm wrong to this day i don't think there's any research that shows any correlation between the amount you spent on your wedding and the happiness of your marriage. So no. I would just say to move forward as you're able to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like we said, we wanna keep this video short. So this is gonna be our last question for this video. If we, ha if we have not got to your question, we will. We will. Um, just stay tuned. So this last question is, what's been the most difficult thing God has been teaching you in regards to application and accountability? Oh. What's been the most difficult thing that God's been teaching me about application? Accountability. Um, okay, you can't pick all of them to be included, but I think 
that for me, it kind of ties into just being a parent now and going on two years of raising Stephen um, and realizing that I think before Stephen came into the picture, I, of course, like I have accountability with Sharetta, but it's 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 different because some things you are. I don't know, like some things like just go unnoticed by your spouse, like sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll be able to, you know, do certain things or like just um, have certain reactions to a situation and your spouse may never know about it, right? Um, with Steven now in the picture, he's so observant and he just like watches every single thing that I do. And so I see that he'll be you know, doing, like copying these things that he sees us doing. And it, it's like a heart check for me because I need to make sure that whatever I'm reading in the Bible, that I'm actually applying it to my life and seeing him copy the things that he sees us do keeps me accountable, if that makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Like he, seeing him learning and growing and observing and just watching our every move and then copying it and imitating it in his own, it's just like, man, like, do I want my child doing that? Like, do I want my child saying those things or, you know, reacting in this way to a, to a certain situation because he's so observant. Um, so that's really been keeping me, you know, even more accountable than before. It's just seeing our son, you know, kind of watch us and, and really making sure that, like, whatever I'm learning from the scriptures, I'm asking for God to give me the, the will and just the desire to do and to implement on a daily basis. I think the, the most difficult thing, let me make sure I got the question right. God has been teaching me um, is about how I spend my time. Um, so in this season of like early early childhood with Stephen, there there is a need for a lot of flexibility. Um, but I think I do still struggle with what do I do with the free time that I have and like how much time am I spending in the word how much time am I taking to really pray and sit with the Lord versus how much time like I might be seeking entertainment on YouTube and the thing is like I don't even really watch movies or like do a lot of things like that mm -hmm. but there are those small things that can become big things and so mm -hmm. you know you can't get caught up on, <laughs> on YouTube and that sort of thing um, so I think that's been the most difficult is, is really applying what I know about spending my time and going to bed early and waking up early to maximize my day, but it's been hard to really apply it. Um, and I think that's where you're, the part about accountability to the person who asked it come, comes in. So, you know, we've tried different set, like. I tried doing different things with Brandon to hold ourselves accountable so that we go to bed at a reasonable hour, wake up at a reasonable hour, but it, it's been a struggle, so um, pray for me. <laughs> but I would say that's probably been the most difficult thing is like, what are you doing with your time? How are you spending your time? Mm. Are you making the most out of each day? Um, that, yeah. 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 Mm. All right, y'all. Yeah, so wow. thank you so much for tuning in watching this video sitting with us just to hear us talk right. <laughs> for a couple minutes we've missed you all let us know if you enjoy this format or yeah, yeah if you want to see you know what else do you want to see what from us topics you want us to cover in, right. in future um videos or content oh and we also want to say a thank you to oh, those yeah. of you who did order our book tokens of love we haven't really yeah. done a video since we announced it and all of that but right. thank you all so yeah. much this for the support <laughs> It has been so overwhelming, and um, we're just so thankful. We're thankful for yeah. you. So God um, loves you. We love you. We appreciate you all. And um, yeah, thank you for tuning in again. Stay tuned for our next video.